guys, I'm Siobhan, a fourth year medical resident specializing in rheumatology. Today's gonna be a really exciting day. We start out here in the hospital clinic, and then in the afternoon, we'll be actually at home doing a virtual clinic. So you're gonna get to see a whole bunch of different things. So this morning, we're in a rheumatology respirology combined clinic. So it's a highly specialized clinic where patients with rheumatic conditions that are affecting their lungs are seen. Uh, so things like rheumatoid arthritis that affects the lungs or lupus, um, and every patient is seen by two attending physicians. Dr. Khalidi is an academic rheumatologist who does research in vasculitis, and I'm really fortunate to have him as a mentor. Dr. Cox is a respirologist and researcher with a special interest in pulmonary fibrosis and sarcoidosis. Although, medical students know him for his intense chest x-ray teaching rounds. So our first patient has a condition called cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. It's primarily an inflammatory condition of the lungs. It's called cryptogenic organizing pneumonia when we don't know what's causing the lung inflammation. So we search for things like cancer, autoimmune diseases, or medications that could be driving the inflammation. But in the case of this patient, no underlying causes were found. As I call the patient from the waiting room, I see a middle-aged woman standing up and struggling to walk down the hall to my clinic room. She tells me that her shortness of breath has gotten progressively worse over the past month. She used to only require extra oxygen when she was walking, but now she needs it all the time. In the last few days, she's actually been coughing up blood. With tears in her eyes, she tells me that she thinks she's dying. This is a huge change from her last appointment, and there's no way I feel comfortable sending her home in this condition. I actually think she needs to be admitted to hospital for more investigations. I'm going to, at this point, um, go and find Dr. Khalidi and Dr. Cox. I'll talk to them about what we've been discussing, and then we'll all come back as a, as a group and discuss the next steps with you. As resident doctors, we assess patients and create a treatment plan before reviewing with our attending physician. This is our opportunity to learn and to see if they agree with our plan or if they would suggest something different. Um, so this is a patient that you know well with a history of cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. Um, and I, I'm really worried about her. Uh, she's coming in with higher oxygen requirements, actually she's been coughing up blood and for the last couple of days has had some chest pain. She hasn't been to the emergency department or sought out any other care so far. Hemoptysis is not a common symptom of organizing pneumonia, so that makes us worry about other things. So we're going to go back and think about the organizing pneumonia being something that's occurring in context in association with cancer. We've had a few examples of that in the past. Pulmonary embolism, infection is the commonest cause of hemoptysis, so we need to look for those. We perhaps advise the emerge staff of, our, of those concerns in addition to whatever else comes up. With her worsening symptoms, we discuss her entire case from the beginning, ensuring that nothing was missed. We go back into the patient's room together and tell the patient that we think she needs to go straight to the emergency department. She actually looks relieved, and I can tell she was scared to go back home like this. Okay, just dropped the patient off at the emergency department triaging, spoke to the emergency doctor, so he has some of her uh, past history and understands what we're worried about. Now I'm heading back to clinic to see the next person. Oh boy, now I'm really feeling the pressure because we're behind schedule and then you never want to feel rushed with the next patient. It's always tough. That's one of the big differences in hospital because patients are there. You can always go back and see them later. Whereas in clinic, they're waiting for you. You know, people have their schedules. You don't want the waiting room to get too full during COVID. So uh, yeah, it's its own set of challenges that I'm learning. All right, Siobhan, can you see the RAILD for 930, please, in room five? Yep, no problem. Sounds good. Okay, so before seeing the patient, I always like to review their chart so that I'm up to date on, you know, their past history because, you know, Dr. Khalidi knows these patients well, but I'm meeting them for the first time. Um, so let's see. Okay, so this patient um, was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, um, has some damage to his bones already in his hands, um, and has interstitial lung disease, and that's why he's followed in both of these clinics. So far, it looks like his lungs have been not too bad, so let's see how he's feeling today. Oh no. I've got to say, it's really strange not to go running for a code blue. Uh, 
different people are on the case today. You know, it always makes you a little bit sad knowing that someone's that critically ill right now. Before seeing me, the patient had a pulmonary function test this morning to measure his lung function. The patient breathes into this machine, which measures his lung volumes, rate of flow, and gas exchange. Unfortunately, the results show a decline in his lung function, and his most recent CT scan looks slightly worse compared to six months ago. The patient tells me that he and his wife go for a walk every morning and evening. He hasn't noticed much of a difference, but his wife tells him that he's walking slower these days and seems to be more tired. So after talking about his breathing symptoms, I switch gears and ask him about his joints. He tells me that his joints are fine. So I examined his hands and found two swollen joints. He was actually surprised that they were so painful when I put pressure on them. Okay, so now let's find Dr. Cox and Dr. Khalidi to be able to review this case. I've seen this next patient with the rheumatoid arthritis and the ILD. Um, so this is a patient that has been doing well on leflunomide and plaquenil, but now with more short of breath and pulmonary function tests today show that uh, lung function looks worse. So I'm thinking that we need to increase the immunosuppression. Uh, Siobhan, how many joints were swollen? Um, I just found two swollen joints. Okay, that's, uh, that sounds like good control of a rheumatoid. After reviewing his most recent lung CT, we get into a detailed discussion about medication choices. This is where the expertise of Dr. Khalidi and Dr. Cox comes together, and it's incredible. It allows us to consider the patient's condition as a whole, rather than just focusing on his joints or his lungs. We go back to discuss medication changes with the patient. To maintain social distancing in this small room, you can see that Dr. Khalidi is standing just outside the door during this conversation. Then I quickly jot down some notes while it's still fresh in my mind before moving on to the next patient. Okay, so this next patient is really interesting. And I'll say you never want to be an interesting patient in medicine. It means that something is rare or something's gone wrong. In this case, it's a young woman with lupus and a rare condition called shrinking lung syndrome. Shrinking lung syndrome is a rare manifestation of lupus. The lungs themselves look normal on imaging, except for the fact that they keep shrinking smaller and smaller. One theory is that it's caused by weakness of the diaphragm, but that's still being researched. Although it sounds terrifying, the prognosis is actually quite good for these patients if they receive immunosuppressive medication treatments. And once it's been treated, it usually doesn't relapse. Okay, so I've just seen uh, the young woman with uh, lupus and shrinking lung syndrome. Her lupus seems to be well controlled right now from her symptoms as well as in the blood work. Um, and her lung capacity, the, her pulmonary function test is good and she, she's breathing well as well. Uh, right now, from a medication standpoint, she's on Plaquenil, mycophenolate, and low-dose prednisone. She's really eager to get off medications and I said we would talk about that today. Improve, it's nice to see her symptoms improve. Um, and how long are we? Three, we're we're three just years? just over three three years out now. Well, um, there's very little in the literature to tell us what to do. So when we started, uh, just to tell Siobhan that when we started this, this was we thought was a very rare disease, and now we have about 20 patients uh, with this illness. And but there's almost nothing written in the literature that tells us the duration of therapy and you know what to expect in the longer term uh, from patients. So maybe you have enough patients in our database to... Yeah, and what we'll need also to do is to find a, a resident or a from respirology or rheumatology and, and collaborate in the research aspect in addition to what we do clinically here. Perfect, so room number six? Yes, Okay. exactly. Let's go. And that's how medicine progresses. Conversations in the clinic turn into research studies, which then get published and discussed around the world. Okay, done with my notes now. So let's go find Dr. Khalidi and find out if there's anything left to do for this morning. And then otherwise, we've got to get home to start the afternoon clinic. Okay, so good morning. Yes, very busy, but, uh, and uh, successful. So uh, we will go uh, now um, to meet online for our virtual clinic for this afternoon and some of our teaching that we're going to do there as well. Perfect. Okay, we'll see you online then. See you then. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's actually kind of nice to move in the middle of the day. A little bit stressful to be on time, but it sort of wakes me up.
So traveling between clinics, you know, I try to use this time to feel more grounded and prepare myself for my afternoon clinic. Because, you know, a morning like this, where you're sending someone to the emergency department, you're dealing with really complex patients, um, it can be it can be challenging and you wanna be on, the, on your game when you're now dealing with new patients the afternoon. Um, so I listen to Eckhart Tolle often in the car. He, the most famous book I think is The Power of Now. I'm not sure if you guys have read that, but it's all about being present, being mindful, and I absolutely love his teachings, so um, I would recommend it. All right, so home now. Um, I'm gonna change out of these contaminated hospital clothes and then do the professional on the top, sweatpants on the bottom, classic Zoom clinic, and we can quickly grab a bit of food as well, which would be nice. Okay, so my professional on top turned into just a comfy t-shirt because um, I'm not actually gonna be seeing any patients over video. I'm just gonna be interacting with the medical team over uh, MS Teams and calling patients. So I can be truly comfortable. Hi, Dr. Khalidi. Long time no see. All right, who, who can I get started with? So virtual clinics like this just started because of the pandemic. And you can imagine rheumatology patients tend to be very immune suppressed because of the medications we give them. So we don't want them going out, going to the hospital or clinics if they can avoid it. Um, so what we do is we assess them virtually and if we need to see them in person, then we'll bring them in. This afternoon feels kind of social by COVID standards because we've got two other residents joining us. One internal medicine resident and the other is coming from physiatry. So now I call the patient, do an assessment virtually and then go back to our video chat to discuss the case with Dr. Khalidi. Okay, so I saw the new patient. Um, it's a 67 year old man who was referred for possible giant cell arteritis. Um, so he presented to the emergency department yesterday because he had a severe headache. When he was chewing, he had pain and then he had stiffness in his shoulders. And the emergency doctors did some blood work and it showed that he had elevated inflammatory markers. Yeah, I think that's a great next test. I'm uh, quite partial to the... This is a patient who was referred for giant cell arteritis, a condition that causes inflammation of the large blood vessels in the body. Classically, patients will develop a painful, bulging temporal artery on the side of their head, but that doesn't happen to all patients. One of the most serious complications we worry about is inflammation of the artery supplying the eye. If untreated, patients with giant cell arteritis can go permanently blind, which is why we're very aggressive at treating this condition. So now Dr. Khalidi and I call the patient back as a three-way call so that the patient gets to meet Dr. Khalidi and we get to discuss the plan. So I wanted to confirm the plan with you. Um, Dr. Khalidi and I have spoken about it and our next step to confirm the diagnosis is going to be getting a temporal artery MRI. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's negative, then we'll have to talk about some other options uh, like potentially getting a biopsy of the temporal artery. Uh, do you have any questions about all of this? Okay, perfect. Thanks so much, it was really nice to meet you. Dr. Khalidi also gives us teaching sessions throughout the day, and usually it's about medical literature in the context of the patients that we're seeing. So today, for instance, we're talking about giant cell arteritis because of the patient we just spoke to. And that's the day. From a specialty clinic in the hospital to virtual clinic at home, we're finding the best ways to care for our patients during the pandemic. Thanks for joining me for the day. I hope you get a sense of how broad the field of rheumatology is and why I love it so much. Plus, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more. If there are certain conditions you really want me to go more in depth on, just let me know in the comments below because I'd love to do that. Otherwise, be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So, bye for now.